So viruses that affect the skin and potentially wounds. Um, so there are relatively few viruses that actually affect through the skin. There's a couple, but not many. Most viruses that affect the skin actually get into you through a different route and then become systemic infections through your blood and they, inf they infect your skin cells from underneath by having gotten into your blood through uh, other means. So they may manifest on the skin, but that's usually not how they infect you. Uh, a particularly nasty set of diseases are what are called the pox viruses. This is a set of uh, related diseases. Um, smallpox is the pox virus that affects humans. Uh, cowpox is the pox virus that affects cows. Monkeypox affects monkeys. Orph affects sheep, I believe. And humans can catch cowpox, monkeypox, and orf, but it's much more difficult. And in humans, all of those things produce a much uh, reduced infection. But smallpox in humans is uh, extremely deadly and extremely contagious uh, and also extremely gone. It's the first disease that has ever been actually eradicated uh, by humans. So we developed a vaccine against it. The vaccine was pretty much universally deployed, was extremely effective, and now smallpox exists, does not exist in the wild. It exists, well, uh, there was a lab uh, in Russia that had some stores of smallpox for doing research on. And a number of years ago, I think it was like five or six years ago, they finally made the decision to just destroy it so that there would be no more smallpox left in the world. Now, is there actually no more smallpox left in the world? I would lay a good bet that it's sitting around in some sort of government bioweapons facility, if not ours, probably somebody else's. But... Other than those few places, it doesn't exist anymore. Um, the pox diseases, and there are still pox diseases that exist, just not smallpox, uh, progress through several stages, right? You first get the formula formation of what are called macules on the surface of the skin. Um, the, these are small discolored areas. And by the way, there are lots of diseases that progress through these phases. A papule, which is usually a raised but solid centered area. So it's a bump on your skin. Moving to a vesicle or blister, which is a raised fluid filled uh, blemish on the skin. Uh, and once that blister fills with pus, it becomes a pustule. Uh, the pustule eventually bursts, leading to a crust. And particularly the skin of the crust flakes away and can be very highly virus laden, uh, eventually forming into a scar tissue. And uh, smallpox was well known that the survivors of it would have pox scars for the rest of their life. Uh, so diseases of, of pox virus are all um, caused by the, the variola virus family. Um, infection occurs by inhalation. So usually it gets the, the route of exit uh, is often that the dead virus-laden skin will be flaking off constantly, but it gets into you because you breathe in the dust that contains those virus-laden dead skin cells. 
So it infects by inhalation and then it manifests as a skin virus. Uh, there have been cases of monkeypox in humans, usually through the bushmeat trade, uh, people who hunt and kill primates for food, uh, and the diagnosis, treatment, and prevention, uh, well, prevention is vaccination. Um, if you were born in 1980 or before, then you were probably vaccinated for smallpox. If you were born after that, you probably weren't. Uh, because by that point, the disease had been completely eliminated from the wild. And there is a small percentage chance that the vaccine could hurt you. It was something like a one in a million chance that the vaccine would activate into a uh, smallpox-like disease. But, yeah, and so like when smallpox existed, it made perfect sense. You'd take a one in a million shot in order to prevent yourself from getting this disease that had killed hundreds of millions of people. Uh, but when that disease didn't exist in the wild anymore, it became unfeasible to keep giving people the, uh, the, the vaccine. We continued to give the vaccine through, the 19, through 1980 because we knew that the Soviet Union had weaponized smallpox as a biological agent, so we wanted to have the population uh, immune to it. By the time you get to the 80s, uh, the Cold War is kind of cooling down. You get to the 90s and the Soviet Union breaks up and you don't really need it anymore. At least we hope. Herpes. Uh, so, um, herpes is an infection uh, technically of the mucous membranes. It technically doesn't infect the skin, but it infects things that we think of as being skin-ish. Um, it's a uh, signs and symptoms. Is it, It's going to cause uh, basically blisters um, on the mucous membranes or surrounding skin, uh, uh, what are called skin lesions, those things that I talked about on the first slide, macule, papule, vesicle, sometimes postule, usually not. Uh, and uh, the herpes virus will infect the mucous membranes, typically um, around the lips. The lips are technically a mucous membrane. Uh, that has been turned outwards, so it faces the outside world, uh, or along the genitalia, so the glands of the penis, uh, as well as the foreskin, uh, and the uh, labia surrounding the vagina are both mucous membranes, uh, or mucous membrane adjacent enough that they can get infected. The virus then moves into the local nerves, travels up the nerves, hides out inside of the ganglia, uh, where it can reactivate multiple times, and it's a classic latent virus. Um, the symptoms manifest as painful lesions. Well, actually lesions that can be anywhere from barely visible to painful, depending upon how nasty an inflammation you have, um, that usually manifest for anywhere from a few days to a few weeks, and then go away, and then might show back up again. It's an extremely successful virus. It's spread throughout most of humanity. Uh, about like 70 to 80 percent of U.S. sexually active adults have some form of herpes virus infection. Um, it is generally not life-threatening, and most people who get it will have, like, one breakout and then might never get another breakout the rest of their life. Uh, it is most capable of spreading when you are having an outbreak, right? So if you have active herpes lesions, you are at a high risk for spreading it. But even if you don't have active lesions, it is still possible to spread it to someone. Um... Diagnosis, treatment, and prevention. So diagnosis is usually on the, cases, on the basis of the lesions, like 
you, you get bumps on your mouth or your genitalia and you go to the doctor and the doctor says, yep, that looks like herpes. Uh, if they want to, they can immunoassay and see exactly which strain of herpes you have. Um, and there are a number of antiviral drugs that have been developed. Uh, they don't cure it, but they help to control the symptoms and the frequency of outbreaks. Uh, I think acyclovir is, is probably uh, the main one of those. Here you can see a classic herp oral herpes outbreak here and here. So if you've ever gotten cold sores or fever blisters, in all likelihood, that's a herpes outbreak. Warts. One of the few viruses that they actually do infect through the skin. Um, warts are caused by various types of papillomaviruses. And there are a bunch of different papillomaviruses, like probably hundreds of different varieties of papillomaviruses. They infect the uh, squamous epithelial cells of your skin and cause those cells to reproduce uh, out of control so that the skin ends up thickening and creating the wart. Uh, most warts are harmless. Um, they're annoying, sometimes painful. Uh, they can be transmitted, so they're actually contagious, usually by direct contact or by fomites. Um, and uh, you can get rid of them through various techniques, right? So they can burn them out with a laser. Um, they make this like mild acid drip that you apply for a few weeks and it like eats away at the skin. Um, I believe that they could be like frozen. Sometimes they're removed surgically. And often if you just wait, they'll eventually go away. Uh, the, uh, even if you get rid of it, the wart can come back because you probably didn't get rid of all of the infected cells. Uh, but you, for the most part, your immune system is very good at dealing with papillomaviruses. And usually if you get a wart, it'll eventually go away and your immune system will control it. It might come back during times of stress, when you're infected with other things, things like that. Um, warts are seldom dangerous, uh, although uh, genital warts, particularly spread by HPV, have been linked to uh, uh, to cervical cancer in uh, women, and uh, as well as uh, uh, cancer of the head of the glands in men, though that's more rare. Chickenpox and shingles. So again, these are going to be uh, viruses that affect the skin and they get out through the skin, but you usually catch them through inhalation of dead skin cells. Uh, they're related to herpes virus. Uh, they can be called either herpes zoster or varicella zoster virus. Uh, and the same virus causes both chickenpox and shingles. The signs and symptoms are lesions, usually just like the ones that I talked about at the beginning, starts with a macule, progresses through a um, papule, vesicle to pustule, uh, occurring along the back and trunk initially and spread across the body. They're itchy and painful. Uh, shingles lesions usually occur along the path of a single nerve, um, but otherwise look very similar. So the pathogenesis is you get it usually through inhalation, it's carried throughout the blood uh, to dermal cells that cause the rash characteristic of chicken pox. And from there infects nearby nerves and goes into the ganglia where it goes into uh, uh, latency. 
and can then reactivate along usually just one nerve will start producing viruses and infect the local tissue. Typically, this is going to happen during when you're in some sort of immunocompromised state. Either you're elderly or high stress or sometimes pregnant uh, or something else happens to lower your immune system. Uh, sometimes it'll be when you're sick with something else. As far as epidemiology goes, uh, chickenpox is typically thought of as a childhood disease, um, mostly because it's very contagious. So at least back when chickenpox was a thing, uh, you were quite likely to get it as a child. If you led a very sheltered life and managed to make it to adulthood without getting chickenpox, it could be very severe. Um, chickenpox in children is usually not a particularly severe disease. Um, but in adults, it can cause a much stronger immune reaction that can be deadly. By the way, like cowpox does infect cows. Monkeypox infects monkeys. Chickenpox does not infect chickens. It's not zoonotic. It doesn't come from chickens. It's just a human disease. The Where the term came from is in a little bit of dispute, but it's thought that like during a time when smallpox was a thing that people would get and die from on a regular basis. Uh, Chickenpox was also a thing that people would get, but it was like annoying but wouldn't kill you. So uh, it's thought that like the name came from like, it's a chicken version of the disease. Like if you call somebody a chicken, like cowardly, not very strong sort of thing. That like it's, it's like the pox, but kind of weak. Um, so that's probably where the name comes from. Uh, diagnosis, treatment, and prevention. The lesions are very characteristic for chicken pox. Uh, so that's typically how it's diagnosed. Um, treatment, it's viral. There's not very good, uh, viral treatments for it. I think that there are some drugs that can help with shingles. Um, at least reduce the likelihood of a shingles outbreak um, and maybe reduce the amount of time that it lasts. Uh, but usually uh, the treatment is just palliative and often there are a lot of cures that may or may not really work. Like I've heard that, you know, oatmeal bath. Uh, when I was a kid, it was a tomato soup bath. I don't know that any of these things actually work. They probably don't. But um, you just like bed rest, fluids, pain relievers, fortitude. Uh, there is currently a vaccine available against chicken pox. It's a relatively effective vaccine. And um, there's also a vaccine for shingles. I think that the shingles vaccine is really kind of just a chicken pox booster. Um, because one of the reasons why you get shingles when you're older is uh, like over time, your immunity to chicken pox fades. And if it fades enough, then shingles becomes more likely to reactivate because your immune system isn't as competent against it. So. The vaccine is really just like a, a, a booster to kind of like, boom, give your immune system the the boost that it needs to go, oh, right, yeah, chicken pox. That's how chicken pox works. I, this is what I need to do to kill it. Uh, so, yeah. Measles. Um, also called rubiola. Signs and symptoms of measles, it's characterized by uh, very specific spots. Uh, they're not like pustules, like you'll get in a pox virus, but they're discolorative macules called coplic spots, and they are a diagnostic symptom. Uh, you also get uh, a number of rare complications, usually, like the standard set of measles symptoms do not typically kill, but there are a number of complications that can arise from it that can become deadly. 
The cause is the measles vi virus or the rubiola virus. Uh, and uh, again, this is going to be a virus that affects the skin, but you get resp uh, through the respiratory tract. You breathe in the virus and then it manifests on your skin. Uh, the pathogenesis, uh, most of the symptoms are caused by an immune response to the infected cells. Uh, epidemiology, measles is actually one of the, if not the most contagious disease known. Um, it has a reproduction number of something like 10, which means that for every person who gets it, on average, they will give it to 10 other people. Uh, fortunately, uh, yeah, so it's spread by respiratory droplets and humans are the only host. Uh, diagnosis is based off of the characteristic public spots. Um, there is no treatment other than palliative care, right? Make the person comfortable, fluids, stuff like that. Um, measles, we have a very, very effective measles vaccine given as part of the MMR. And it produces a high level of long-lasting immunity uh, to the point that for a number of years, um, measles was uh, completely unknown in the United States. There were like several decades in which we had zero or like maybe one or two cases of measles. It's making a comeback because of the anti-vax movement. And so now... There are communities uh, where there are enough people or enough children, uh, usually the parents who are insisting upon this are vaccinated fully, but their children are often, um, the, the children are often not vaccinated in some of these communities to a point where the amount of uh, vaccinated people necessary to maintain herd immunity, it drops below that number. And because measles is so contagious, you need about 95% of the population to have immunity in order to get herd immunity. Um, so we have seen measles outbreaks in the past several years in the United States due to lack of vaccination. Um, there have always been a few communities, like there are particular types of Orthodox Jews and a few other religious communities that have always, that tend to live congregated together and have always um, been against vaccination for whatever reason. And s most of these communities actually live in Europe. So there have always been uh, outbreaks of measles among those populations in Europe. Uh, but it hasn't been until the recent anti-vax movement that we started seeing such things in the United States. Here you can see just to demonstrate the effectiveness of the vaccine, this is the number of cases in terms of thousands per year. Uh, and you can see very, very high, like, you know, six, seven hundred, eight hundred thousand cases a year uh, back in the 50s. Here you can see in 62, the attenuated vaccine is licensed. Didn't get to everyone immediately. But within a year or two, the number of measles cases dropped to uh, very, very few. And by 1980, measles vaccination was uh, almost universal in the United States. And here we see basically zero cases, effectively zero cases for years and years. And if this graph went on a bit further, you'd see a few bumps down here. All right, so that is the viral disease.